wasn't an accident. I realized that Title IV funding, whether it's 4D, 4E, it doesn't matter. They use it to collect money for your children. There's a reason why grandparents are alienated. Because if they give the children to kin, they don't get paid. They don't get paid. I've had grandparents 30 years ago heading DUI. And they terminated their rights too and adopted out those children when they were perfectly viable placement. But they don't get paid. an extension cord? We need an extension cord for the PA. Okay, so where was I? Where was I? DFC, DFC sucks. You mean DCF? DCF, sorry. DCF sucks. They do. So, oh, speaking of, don't forget collecting signatures. We are still collecting signatures. We're very close to Brownback. So even if he gets shipped out to Rome or whatever, more power to Rome for having him, but he still has to face the music if we get an indictment. So he doesn't get to escape. He is responsible for this. Had I been governor, this wouldn't be happening. We would not be having this conversation. Because I would have already dismantled this organization that's performing criminal behavior and harming our children. Period. End of story. We wouldn't be here. But see, the money talks. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the money. I have Jim Thompson is going to be coming here in just a few. And Jim is running for the congressional seat right now to replace Pompeo. Who's now head of Pompeo is now head of the uh, FBI, which is interesting. Yeah, sure. But it is what it is. The bottom line is this: I love when you days. hear Jim, you're going to understand what I've understood for a long time. He is just a person like us. He grew up poor, homeless, took himself into the military, worked his way through school to become an attorney. And guess what law he specializes? Want to take a wild guess? Family, corporate, civil rights. He specializes in the Constitution of the United States. That is who we need. <laughs> that is who we need. Is people who will come out on a Saturday in the midst of their campaign because he wants to know what's going on. He wants to understand better how this is destroying families. Why? So he can go and speak for us fight for us. People all too often, especially in Kansas, will look at somebody and go, oh, they're, a, they're an R. They're a Republican or they're a Democrat or they're this or they're... Stop it. Because the system is rigged against us anyway. If you're an independent voter, you can't just walk in and go, I want to run for office. You don't get that. You're not treated the same. As an independent all my life, I walked in to run for governor and I was told, oh no, sorry. You want to run as an independent, you better collect 10,000 signatures. But if you're a Democrat or Republican, you just pay the $2,000. See, they want to make it about divide and conquer. We can't let them. Look at the people. Look at where they've come from. Follow the money. Follow the money. When you start seeing PAC money, you start seeing all, all the corporations, big oil, big gas, pharmaceuticals, run! Run! Because those are the people that are passing these laws to take your children. That's who's doing it. 
so stay stop it. Stay now, before we go any further, Raymond, where are you? <laughs> you just went that way. I'm going to turn it over. I want Raymond. Um, I, I kind of brought you some education with regard to taping, with regard to not answering the door and immediately seeking help. You also need to understand that if you've ever been affected by DCF, ever, ever, I don't care if it was unsubstantiated or not, if you've ever been affected by DCF, your children, future children, your future grandchildren are all in jeopardy. Hospitals are the worst. They will kidnap your newborn baby from your breast and you haven't even had time to think about child abuse. That's sick. That is sick. So I want you guys to welcome Raymond. of our Constitution is not going to be tolerated. Last I checked, I'm an American, and I will stand against a tyrannical government, and I will stand against those who wish to do harm to our children and to destroy our families for money. So let's let's listen to what Raymond has to say. He's going to use the bullpen. I am. Uh, I'll try not to blast you guys out. Hello, hello. Is that too loud in your faces? <laughs> do that every time. So I brought notes. Um, before I do anything, I just want to take a moment. If everyone will join me in a moment of silence. Because there are parents out there suffering in silence. I talked to a husband whose wife is jailed for 30 days on a contempt of court charge for speaking publicly on Facebook about the unlawful kidnapping of her children. And he said, I thought I was alone. I thought I was suffering alone. And so I just want to take a moment for those parents that are suffering, suffering alone, for those children that are in DCF custody and are suffering without their families, for those parents that are suffering from parental alienation. If you all just join me in a moment of silence, please. You are not alone. So what I wanted to talk is about parental rights. Because DCF and their policies and procedures say that we as parents have rights. And children have rights. There was a ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court many years ago that said the right for parents to raise their children without government interference is a fundamental liberty issue. So let's define that. What does fundamental mean? It means serving as an original or generating source, serving as a basis, supporting existence, or determining essential structure or function. Another word that we could substitute is that it is a foundational liberty interest. What is liberty? It is the freedom from restraint in a general sense. The body is at liberty when not confined. The will or mind is at liberty when not checked or controlled. A man enjoys or woman liberty when no physical force operates to restrain their actions or volitions. And an issue is a final outcome that usually constitutes a solution. So this is a foundational issue about our understanding about what liberty 
is and that we as parents have a right to raise our children according to our conscience without government interference, period. Period. And just as some background, my children were taken two years ago. Originally, we believed it's because we posted we were moving to Colorado where we, my wife and I could receive uh, medical cannabis care we weren't using in the state of Kansas. People seem to not understand that. We were just moving in order to receive access for care. The reason we believe that is because the allegations were so outrageous and we had so much documentation that they were false, we couldn't figure out why they were keeping our children. And then we found a police report where they snapshotted our Facebook about that post of moving to Colorado. But what we've discovered through working with people like Jamie, love your dad, Jamie, she's she's there representing you and Daria, all of those who have been silenced by these criminals. But as we travel around the country, we began to see this pattern of violating people's due process, of civil rights violations under the color of law, and it seemed like there was this umbrella, and that's where we learned about the incentives. But see, because we have a fundamental liberty issue at stake here, that the state cannot come into our home unless they have a compelling state interest. What is that and what does that mean? That means that as a society, we do not support child abuse. And if we believe that child abuse is going on, we've empowered people that say we have a state interest to stop child abuse and therefore we are going to come into your home and we're going to investigate. But see, that isn't something they can just arbitrarily do. That's not something that's not restrained by our rights and our liberties as American citizens. We have constitutional protections, and as many of you know, not in practice, but in theory, according to DCF, we have parental rights. Now, how many here you want to raise your hand. How many here believe that they have seen DCF order the rights of parents to raise their children according to their conscience? Any hands? I don't see any hands. as represented by their government have determined we have a society will not tolerate the abuse of children. That's a compelling state interest. This interest is to res be restrained by the courts who are supposed to be independent and an impartial tribunal. There's supposed to be one check and balance when the state comes in and we know if you studied your civics that power corrupts and so when a state comes in with an accusation we have certain rights and the courts are supposed to be impartial and they are supposed to respect and defend the rights of the parents. They are supposed to have an assumption, which we know this is not true, that people are innocent until proven guilty. But see, what many of us are missing and what many of us have lost is that just because we have these rights and these rights are not given to us by men, they are rights given to us by our Creator, they are intrinsic in who we are as Americans and people. These are inherent in who we are. They're not given to us and they cannot be taken away from us. But the problem is, power will not just give you rights. You must demand them. You must stand up for them. So I found this quote by Frederick Douglass. He was an escaped slave that became the head. What did he become the head of? I'm just kidding. Of the abolition movement prior to the Civil War. So we knew all about government corruption and injustice. But this is what Frederick Douglass said, and I love this. He said, the whole history of the progress of human liberty shows that all concessions concessions for reform, yet made to the August claims of reforms, have been born of an earnest struggle. The conflict has been exciting, agitating, all-absorbing, and for the time being, puts all other tumults to silence. 
It must do this or it does nothing. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation, protesting, standing up for our rights, are men and women who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. This struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, and it, want, and it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. They will not give you your rights. You must stand up and take them That's right. and demand them, That's right. as we are doing here today. I know you don't, I don't need that. <laughs> Mom don't need a ball horn. No. Here's what you have to understand. He's absolutely right. As long as you sit down, they will run over you. They will run over you. So let me ask you. What is it you want? Justice! I didn't hear you. What is it you want? Justice! That's not good enough. Let me ask you again. What is it you want? Justice! And when do you want it? Yeah. What do you want? Justice! Justice. Oh, you guys better get your local court or not, because that is not going to do it for me. You guys have to learn to use your voices. I don't let them control me by fear. I call them out and I scream as loud as I know how. Because if I wouldn't have done that, he wouldn't be here. I assure you, no one would be talking about this. There would not have been an audit that they failed miserably. We are making a difference. So let me ask you again. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? No! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? No! Now you can finish. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Don't get, don't get hurt. <laughs> okay. So back to Frederick Douglass. <laughs> but this is this is a fantastic part. We need to take this to heart. Frederick said power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did. And it never will if you don't do it. No one will do it for you. And like Jennifer said, they will trample you. Find out just what any people will quietly submit to. And that is the exact amount of tyranny that will be prescribed to them. If you're suffering in silence at the injustices of DCF, the Department of Children and Family Services, the family court systems, you will continue to do so because they will give you nothing. You have to get up. You have to get out here and you have to stand up. Not only for your own family, but like Jennifer and others that are here who have no dog in this fight besides the fact there are Americans that love liberty and love children and families, we gotta fight for everybody. So let's look at a few of these rights. Maybe you guys never got this form that they had you to sign if you had children in DCF custody. I want you to know if you guys have experienced this. So number one of parental rights of DCF, you have a right to be treated as an individual with dignity and worth. I second that. That's a wonderful right. How many of you have experienced that? Okay, one person. Oh, no, I was a child running. Okay. <laughs> That's more like it. I didn't think anybody did. Number two, you have a right to be listened to and consulted regarding your child's care. They have forced medicated my children, other children. They've done unlawful medical procedures on other people's family. No consultation. You have the opportunity to demonstrate your capacity to provide a suitable home for your child, to regain custody of your child as quickly as possible. What a load of horse. Shit. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> when 
regaining custody is consistent with the health, welfare, and needs of your child, but we all know they'll just make stuff up. They'll just say, oh, you have this, oh, you don't have air conditioning, oh, you only work 20 hours a week, then you go work 60, oh, no, you work too much. You have a right to participate in planning for your child, to receive a copy of the case plan, and to receive notice of any formal review of your child's case plan. That is also a load of horse shit. As Jen, excuse me, I know there's children here, but this makes me angry. I have not seen any of my case plans in my possession. Ever. Ever. I cannot even record evidence when I go into these case planning meetings. You have the right to receive services in according with the case plan and court orders to assist you. To assist you. DCF is supposed to assist you getting your children back as quickly as possible. To assist you in overcoming the conditions which led to the removal of your child. To help you cope with alternative plans with your child if it's not feasible to return them home. We all know that these they adopt these children out for the extra federal incentives as Jennifer has already touched upon. Got a couple more. You have a right to visit and communicate with your child within reasonable guidelines. Notice, notice how they don't define that. If they don't let you see your kids, they just say, well, it wasn't reasonable. But they won't give you the reasons why. You have a right to have your children's cultural, religious, ethnic, or racial heritage respected and planned for as much as possible. Another lie. They've done everything to overthrow the faith of my children. I have a caseworker on tape that I said, so you're telling me if my children were Muslim and they got put in a foster home and those foster parents took off their head covering and made them dress in American clothes and had them celebrate Easter and eat pork. That would be okay. And she said, that's DCF policy. Unspoken policy. They're going to do everything they can to disrupt the family bond. Everything. They've done everything to my children. Everything. This is a lie. It's not a lie. It's the truth. But we have to make them do it. Sorry if I'm getting a little fired up. You have a right to receive. You have a right to receive an explicit description of the expectations you must meet in order to have your child re return. That's baloney. They're so vague in everything they do. Half the parents don't know why they're running around doing the services that they are because DCF doesn't feel like they have to explain that to you. You just need to do it. You just need to comply. Surrender your rights. Surrender your children and your freedom or you'll never see your kids again. That's what they say to parents. That's exactly what they say to parents. You have the right to have your information that is maintained by the agency confidential. We all know that's not true. Just Google my name and see how much they called me a liar in the press. No, they'll spread your information. They call every one of our care providers and slander us. Anyone that works as an advocate, they go behind our back and they call them and tell them that me and my wife, Amelia, we're just meth addicts. We're just liars. We're these evil parents. And they do that to every single person that's tried to help in our life. And the one time they said, all you got to do is sign a release to any citizen and we'll prove you're a liar. As soon as I said, well, that citizen's Jennifer Wynn. How did that turn out? <laughs> they didn't give me anything. Anything. It took them three weeks to comply, DCF. Comply. And then they hid all the documents. But they gave her enough where she came out publicly and said, this is kidnapping. And finally... You have the right to access to your in you have right to access your information. Lies. You don't get any information. Ever. Ever. As well. Within the framework of agency guidelines which take into consideration others' right to privacy. No, the only thing they take into consideration is how they're gonna bully you into giving up your rights. And how they're gonna silence your protesting. 
The only privacy protections are for these criminals. That's right. That's why they gag parents. That's, That's right. why Jamie's gagged. That's why Dari is gagged. Because criminals don't like to be exposed. And you have a right to correct errors in those records. How many people have seen wrong information about their kids, wrong information in the petitions for removal, wrong information and so much in their case, and they won't correct it, anything, unless it's correcting something to make you as a parent look even worse. It is time we demand these rights, as well as a right to privacy under the Fourth Amendment, a right to due process under the Fourth and Fifteenth Amendment, a right to confront our accusers according to the Sixth Amendment of the United States Constitution and be presumed innocent until they prove we are guilty. I believe juries should be brought into the family court system. I believe it should be open records with the children name, children's names redacted. I believe parents should have the constitutional right to record every proceeding at their own cost or state cost, as well as any contact with social workers, period. period. We should not expect these rights though, everybody. We must demand them. We need to struggle for the cause of liberty for children and families and demand these rights. We need to fight. We need to fight. We need to fight. Like Jane stops and says, fight for America. Fight for our children and our families. We need to shrug off their threats. We need to scorn their threats of jail, of contempt of court. We need to protest outside their offices. We need to hold those who violate these rights accountable and remove them from office, if not seek criminal penalties against them for violating their oaths and their ethical standards. We need to hold them accountable. We need to litigate and elect people to office like James Thompson who are truly going to fight the defend children and families. And we need to work on legislation and absolutely, and finally, we need to fight. I'm going to close with a quote from Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine said, those who expect to re reap the blessings of freedom must, like men and women, undergo the fatigues of supporting it. This is a fatiguing battle, but it is a, va a battle that has consequences for generations to come. These are our children. Let's fight for them. Thank you. God bless you.
they took her kids, it was too much. And her husband ended his life before ever getting to see his kids again. That's horrible. That's a criminal, is what that is. We cannot sit back and let our constitutional rights be violated. We can't. We just can't. If we do nothing and they take 6,300 children a year in our state, what do you think that number will be in 10 years? Because mind you, over the last 12, we're at a 4,000% increase. Do you understand that? Do you understand how much 4,000% is when it equates to children? It's genocide. It is. It's disgusting. So I want you to know, Mom, 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 we're not going to give up. Grandparents, we're not going to give up. Because the most precious commodity on the face of this planet is our children. And you know, I get real we irritable, and I'm Kansas. one of those bold people, in case y'all haven't figured that out yet. But you know, when I see people running around and protesting by the thousands over a frickin' bathroom, and I only have 75 here to stand up for our children and defend the defenseless against a government entity that makes money off of our children, something in the inside just boils. And I don't care what anybody thinks anymore. I don't care. Because what they're doing is wrong. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care which way you spin it. It's wrong. And it's hurting families. It's hurting children. It's alienating them and then forcing psychotropic drugs down their throat at the age of five. And if anybody thinks that's okay, you need your head examined. That's how I feel about it. Because it's not okay. It's not okay to destroy families. My tax dollars go to protect them. Help them. And you know what's sad? Where was DCF when this young mom... Where was DCF? Where was DCF finding her a couch and a love seat to get her out and established on her own so she could have her baby? Were they there? No. Were they putting out posts running all over the city collecting dishes, silverware, bedding, baby stuff? No. That was me. That was me and the people who volunteer to help me. And we've done it numerous times. Whether we're teaching young moms how to cook, how to budget, how to organize their house, building the baby beds, buying the baby beds. Isn't that what that place is supposed to do? Yes. But guess what? They don't. And we all know it now. We know it. So every one of you, I asked this question earlier. Out of everybody here, who's not registered to vote? You're not old. Okay? Let me see the ones who are registered to vote. How many have already voted in the special election coming up on April 11th? Two. Okay. So the individual that I'm getting ready to introduce that's going to come over here, again, is Jim Thompson. You see a lot of people wearing his shirt. Check, check. Woo -hoo! check, check. Higher microphone. Microphone check. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and finish here. Let Jim Wilkin come over there. But here's, here's, here's the reality, guys. you got to start letting your voices be heard in more ways than just out here protesting. You have to. If you don't know already, felons that are off paper in the state of Kansas can re-register and vote. That has to be, edu that has to be, that education has to be spread. But we have to start looking at the candidates who are real. You know, when I was running, it was very difficult because I only raised $17,000. That's it. That's all I could get. And I'm horrible at asking for money. Imagine that. But with $17,000, we captured 38% of the vote against Brownback, who had $4 million. What that tells me is that we can do this. But we have to apply ourselves. That means you go vote. That makes, you know, if you're an independent and you don't get a say in the primary, go switch. Because I, I don't care anymore. If I have to switch to go vote for somebody that I think has a D, that I think is real, and will do what he says he's going to do, but most importantly, recognizes his true responsibility. Does anybody know what the responsibility of someone elected, do you know what their 
job supposed to be? Their job is to represent the majority voice of their constituents and set their own ideology aside. That is their job. Do you know how many have done that today? Zero. None. I'm told by people like Dan Hawkins, my corporate donors aren't going to allow me to do anything, Jennifer. Since when do you work for your corporate donors, jerk? You're my rep. I pay taxes and you take 40% of my income on top of it. That's not acceptable. So every single person here, you're going to, is Jim here? As soon as he pulls in, we're going to turn it over to him. Ask him those questions. Because it's no different than when I ran. You ask me, I'll answer. Whether you like it or not is immaterial. But the reality for me is if I won what my job was, and that was to represent the majority voice of the constituents in my area and to do what they wanted, not what their corporate donors wanted. But that's the problem. Money is running our politics. And your children are worth money. Therefore, we're here. So I want you to make sure, because, and how many want to march? I'm a marcher, so I like to march. How many want to march? Because I really want to march down to that corner and that intersection, and I want to march back, and I want people to know why we're here. I want people to know that <laughs> we're not going away. We're not. I'm never going to stop fighting for the future of our children. Ever. I can't. It's not in me. I can't watch a child be harmed and just turn around and walk away. Maybe if we acted like it was football, they might all stand. Because what's interesting to me is on issues like abortion, thousands will come to fight for that. Or the freedom of choice. Thousands will come for that. Where are you at when our children that are living are being destroyed? Where are you? They're not here. Imagine that. So don't talk to me about the issues. Well, we, we can't vote for Jim Johnson because, you know, he's pro-choice. Well, and the, the reality is the lies on the TVs make me almost go insane. It, it almost makes me insane. And I think people like Ron Estes that do that should be charged. But they can lie. They can all lie. And that's disgusting to me. But that's the, poli the, that's the political world. Oh, let, let Raymond check. So we're going to go ahead and take a break. When Jim pulls up. We're going to continue, but how many want to march with me today? How many? Just a real short jog down the corner back. How many know our chant? How many know the chant? The chant, and somebody thought I wrote that chant, and I didn't write that chant. Actually, Lara Poor and her kids, who were also victims of DCF, who couldn't be here today. Um, here, you just use this one. Testing. Oh, looky there. I raced around and got that this morning. Um, but, but the reality is, guys, if we don't use our voices, whether they're telling us we can, can't, or whatever, we're not going to get anywhere. If we let people like the good old boys keep getting elected, we're not going to get anywhere. That's, that's just the facts. So we're going to take a break, but I want to tell you what the chant is. So our chant that Lara wrote with her kids, who was victimized by DCF and fought very hard and finally got their children back. It goes like this. One, two, three, set our children free. Four, five, six, the system needs fixed. Seven, eight, nine, these children are mine. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? now and when we did that I, how many were at the first fools no more rally last year yeah 
Alright, not a big response. That <laughs> was an experience. Now this year we weren't as fortunate because April 1st didn't fall on a weekday. Or April Fool's, yeah, because it's a Fool's No More and that's what prompted that title. Um, look at that beautiful girl with her mama, where she belongs. Um, because, you know, Jamie, Jamie still gagged, just like all the other parents. And they were going to terminate Jamie. And for those of you who don't know Jamie and Floyd, they were going to terminate them because Jamie and Floyd had nine children. And the caseworker thought that that was just too many. She didn't need that many kids, which is disgusting in itself. But the reality was, for a pink mark this big, on the back of the leg, where her mom swatted her with the broom handle after she told her a few choice words she shouldn't have said, they took all of her kids. And for three years now, we've been fighting. December 17th of last year, or I'm sorry, December 17th of 2015, we were going to court because they were going to terminate this family with no substantiation of abuse, no criminal charges, nothing more than a pink mark that I witnessed with the picture when I, when the social worker showed me the picture, I was sitting down in El Dorado and I jumped up out of my chair and I said, is that what you're taking these children for in a corporate punishment state? And that began the fight for Jamie and her kids. And now Jamie has some of her kids and she's good enough to parent some of her kids. She's just not good enough to parent all of them. Now, mind you, this is a family that didn't get food stamps, wasn't on state assistance. They provided for their family, and they had no problems doing it until DCF walked in. And then after the court dates and after the devastation, what do you think happened? Floyd lost his job. Things got harder and harder and they drove them even further and further. So the reality is, is we have to stand up. And when we do, and when we stand behind people that are running for these positions that are real, and they want to be our voice, and they're not afraid to stand up, and they're not afraid to speak the Constitution and fight for our rights, that's when we begin to win. So, the duct tape, Oh, they want me to explain the duct, duct tape. The duct tape represents your First Amendment right being taken. You're gagged. You post on your Facebook about the state kidnapping your children. You post about what the state does to you. You go to jail. Because your First Amendment rights no longer stand. That's why we have parents here with duct tape. Because they're gagged. Their First Amendment rights have been taken. And that is why we need someone who will stand up. We need someone who will actually go in there and fight for us, and that person is here today. And that person is Jim Thompson, so give him a hand. Yeah! Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry I was running a little late, folks, but uh, you guys are out here because you are tired of a government not listening to you. You're tired of the lack of due process uh, yeah. and dealing with uh, the government when it comes to your children. Somewhere along the way, we have forgotten that the best interests of our children include making sure that they um, have due process rights as well when we're going through this process. I know that I've handled cases in the past, uh, one in particular that comes to mind uh, against BCF and one of the uh, foster care homes that we had here where a young boy died because there was not adequate oversight and they didn't do the things that they needed to do to protect that child. There are good people that work on both sides of this issue, but what we've got is a failure at the highest levels to make sure that we're receiving adequate funding for DCF, to make sure that we're listening to the people who have these concerns, and there just simply is no due process rights when people have their children taken away. And we've got to make sure that we still start holding the politicians accountable that are allowing this to continue on a state level and on a federal level. So the very first document that we should be consulting when we're enacting regulations or any laws is the Constitution. And they fail to do that time and time again. And we yes, see that sir. here perfectly. Because if a person or an institution could come in and take their children away without having gone through any actual due process rights, without the ability to have it uh, reviewed, 
without any transparency really at all. I know that trying to go through and get records on these kinds of issues is next to impossible, even for me as an attorney. That has to stop. We have to have transparency in the records. We have to make sure that we have the state listening to you and standing up and, and going out and making the regulations and making the laws that would allow you as parents to have that transparency, to have that due process, and that our best interests of our children are kept at heart. Because when we have a for-profit system, that is going to cause problems. And that's what we have. And it starts being more about profits than it is about people and their children. And we've got to get away from that. Yes, sir. Now, let me ask you some questions. Sure. That a lot of these people have asked, okay? Okay. Um, with regard to DCF, for example, uh, they immediately place tags on the family, right? Families can't speak. We've had people actually go to jail um, for three days. We've had one mom went to jail for nine days. We have a woman right now in jail um, for posting on Facebook. Now, how would you go to D? And, and, and again, this is both, like you said, it's both federal and state laws that need to change. But how do we, as citizens, combat the violation of constitutional rights when we are up against the people who have all the power? How do we do that? Well, one of the first things we've got to do is we've got to get more attorneys that are willing to take on these cases. Yes, sir. As a civil rights attorney, I can tell you that there's not enough of us on this side of the law. Too many times we have, I, I know from my side of things, I have an overload of cases. I get calls every week that I have to turn away because I just don't have the time to be able to deal with all the cases that come in. So we've got to have more attorneys stepping up and looking at these issues. When they're talking about talk, taking away children, there needs to be um, a right to counsel that individuals have so that you have an attorney that is there to represent you. Because a lot of times I'll point a guardian ad litem for the child, but the parents don't have the ability to have their own counsel and help them understand the rights. We need to get away from that. If there's going to be a guardian ad litem for the child, it needs to be going to the parents as well who are losing their children. Because we know that DCF is going to have that, um, that counsel there. So um, the first thing we need to do is find more attorneys in town to start taking these cases and filing lawsuits uh, on behalf of the parents to make sure that we're holding them accountable, uh, making sure they're not violating rights. And that's, that's in itself a challenge. A, a huge challenge. Um, I these cases oh, are, are extremely expensive. Um, they're, they're hard to, to deal with, and you are facing an unlimited money supply. And so as attorneys going in and trying to fight that, and usually the attorneys are the one that's running the expense on it, it, it becomes quite a challenge. Um, but some of the other things that can be done, though, you know, when, when you're saying that there's people being put in jail for exercising the rights, um, if, if there's not a court order, then, then to me, I mean, I, I'm not familiar enough with that specific side of it to be able to speak to it, but if there's not a court order that's a gag order, in effect, then uh, there shouldn't be anybody going to jail. Okay. Yeah. So there, there are there gag orders being put up. Okay. Yes. So if the gag orders, I mean, the, the question is, is why you know, are the, the courts doing that? Is that a statutory regulation? And I think it is, actually, now that I, I think back on it. Um, that keeps people quiet and not allowed to discuss those. And so we need to start hitting our legislators yes. on a state level yes. to get them to review that and change that because the, the number one rule for any government needs to be transparency. If you don't have transparency, that things do it, being done in the dark, and then abuses begin to occur after the Now, the other issue that a lot of people... Yeah, go ahead, Raina. I, I just wanted to add the statutory limitations are to protect the children right. from having that put out there but it's actually being utilized to hide what DCF is doing to parents so right. it's not that the statue is too broad it's that nobody has oversight that they're not doing this wrong but my question would be do you support juries in the sink proceedings in the state of Kansas right now Children are removed by a prosecutor, a judge, and attorney ad litem. Would you support a jury system in the removal of children in the state of Kansas? Yes. I, mean, I think anytime you have the people in coming together to make decisions on things like this, that would be a good idea. Having a, a right to a jury trial um, is one of the rights that we have here. And then they're, they're getting around that through a regulatory proceeding. And a lot of times, with administrative proceedings, you'll have prosecutors and judges that share essentially the same office, um, which is wrong. Um, there needs to be independence between 
all three sides, the judge, the prosecutor, and the defense, uh, so we can make sure that we're serving our rights. Since we have a right to a jury trial in Kansas for civil proceedings, it ought to be the same with this as well. And the procedures for reviewing those records, though, is that you can ask the judge to review them so that you can take a look at them. Um, but a lot of times, these records can be voluminous. And if, if you don't even know what's in them, and trying to tell the judge to sit down and go through you know, thousands of pages of documents, um, a lot of times the judges won't want to do that. I, I, I had this as a tangent uh, issue in, in one of the wrongful death cases I have, and there was about 26,000 pages of documents, I'm told, that uh, were out there, and they wanted to get them in. We're like, well, we haven't even seen them. We can't even tell you whether or not we would object. And so the judge would have to review it, and the judge like, well, I don't want to go through 26,000 pages of documents. So there should be a, a, a way to provide the documentation, allow both sides to go through them, and then you can take them to the court to ask that they be, uh, you be allowed to talk about those issues or re redact out the children's names so that the issue can be discussed. The, there's got to be a better procedure in place. And that, that's what, gag the jury. And, well, the, what's the, the jury? jury gagged anyway. I, I did hear you. The sir. jury is gagged on criminal cases. Only until the end Only until the end of it. So there's a process. Uh -oh. We lost you. That's all right. I can talk loud. Yeah. The, the, uh, the end of it, though, is that we've got to go talk to our legislature and get them doing something with that issue, and getting them addressing this and rewriting the laws to allow the families to have due process rights. Am I on now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Does anybody else have very simple questions? I want to keep them very simple, very short and sweet. Right now, like... They say if a judge says something wrong, you can't sue a judge, or there's no repercussions for going back against DCF when DCF wrongfully takes children. They're less likely to get in trouble if they wrongfully take a child than if they don't take a child and that child gets hurt. So when you're elected, or you know, will there be some sort of plan to punish DCF workers who take children and make up evidence and do all this stuff, even though it's clear that, that it's not... It's, they should, the child shouldn't be taken. The situation so in other words, your question is, will we hold accountable the judges and prosecutors and social workers that are actually doing wrong? Well, there's a couple different issues there. But the judges, um, you're correct. You can't sue judges. They have absolute immunity. There's two things you can do, though, with judges who act wrongly. One, you can report them to... Um, I have a friend that for a judicial uh, ethical violation uh, and have them investigated that way. In Sedgwick County, our judges are elected. And so if they do something that is uh, not right or is wrong, the other thing to do would be to make sure that you get out and let people you know, know that you don't like them. Now you got to be careful because of the gag orders. But Are they um, appointed or yeah, elected? No, they're elected. They're elected here. The, the DCF ones? The judges are, yeah, yeah all the, judges the DCF are. judges are. So get them uh, taken out of office there. With DCF, um, you can sue them. Um, the, the standards are very high, though, and they're very hard, and that's why these, these cases are so hard. Right, so is there going to be a more quick, shorter road to There's not punishment, you know, get them getting fired, them losing their job, no. or taking away There's not much that I can do on the federal level unless we have federal money coming in, and then we can have federal oversight at that point and ask if, if, if we can trace federal money back to DCF, which we probably can, then we can go in and say, we can talk to our U.S. attorney and say, hey, look, you need to do an investigation here. We have a violation of rights going on, and try to get them to investigate. Is this the and that's really about the best thing that you can do. Um, or if you can trace the money directly, then we may be able to put regulations in, in the law to say, hey, if you're going to be accepting federal money, then you need to make sure X, Y, and Z occurs, that you know, there's due process, et cetera. Due process, et cetera. So, but on the that, federal level, Jim, you will do. You, I'll, you I'll understand do whatever. this is an issue. Right. Correct? And anything that I see that I can do, I will. But it, it's a matter of getting in and finding out how the money gets here, whether or not it's something that I would have direct control over that uh, I can do legislation with, or whether or not we need to make sure we get our state legislators doing this. I'm not, and, and I know what you're saying. I'm not okay, concerned. Hold on. Sorry. Let's go to the next one. I have a question. Is there going to be any, are you going to try and introduce any legislation that has to do with uh, cases on an individual basis? Because DCF handles all cases the same. It doesn't matter if it's of the like or something that is real abuse. They still handle them the same. Example, my son was taken because of truancy. Nothing else, just truancy. Yet I was treated.
treated like I was a criminal for two weeks. I could not see or talk to my son. They went and picked him up at school and took him. He had no idea. He had no communication with me or his father. That, it was ridiculous because they found no fault with me. So therefore, we were treated like I was treated like I was an abusive mother, and I'm not. I've raised two older children that are very functional. So what's your question, baby? My question is, is there a possibility that DCF could start taking these cases on an individual basis instead of a flat uh, way of doing it? In other words, if, if I'm understanding what you're saying, it, your issue is with truancy with, with your child, right? Correct. So, which is different than a child abuse situation, yes. and so they should have treated you differently than... Yes. yes. But they don't. It's still the same. No, it's still and, the same. And, well, and then that right there is specifically where we need to get our state legislators involved in this and make sure that they federal. Do, and do that. Federal. Let me interrupt for a second because okay. they get federal education money and they didn't start this shit with like her until they got this federal money and your kid has to go to school or they don't get their federal money it's well and then, okay. then yeah then we it's may be able federal to federal money again okay well then if it's federal money then yeah we can look at putting requirements in there that they have a different way of dealing with this issue so uh, okay, until so i get there and, and see more about it though well, it it's going to be tough. It took almost two years. Anybody else have a question? Back. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, can we all get in our cars, go right up the street here to Sharon Baptist Church that is on this street, and go vote right now? Because the polls close at 4. That's 30 minutes from now. We can all go vote right now, as long as you're in line by like four five four. minutes up the street. Well, if you do that, we're not marching, but that's fine. Okay, we're going to get you elected. Let's vote. Yeah. Why don't we march down there? How far is it? Far enough that we're going to march. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get there before they close. <laughs> okay. Yes. Go ahead, Miko. Do you think media should be able to access CPS cases? And do you see the problems or benefits of media being able to look at these cases? I think that should be a consent with the parent. But if that well, was consented, I don't see why. I, I see problems that could be addressed, though, easily. One, with this consent with the parents. Two, is with redaction of, of names and identification. We redact documents all the time when we file them, so there's no reason that you can't redact out names and identification information so that you can talk about the issue and still show where the problem is um, and move forward. And particularly if, if the parent has waived uh, that issue or consented to that issue, then there shouldn't be a problem. So, uh, there, there should be a way to be able to get that done. Okay, so I have to ask one very important question because I, every time I see the commercial, I want to lose my ever-living mind. Do you agree that abortion is okay if the parents don't like the gender? No. Thank no. you. I, I just had to clarify that. Just had to clarify that. I don't want to raise taxes. The, the, the commercials you're seeing are blatantly false. Um, Miss Pelosi, I've never met her, never talked to her. <laughs> and let me ask you this, there. Jim, from the it's, attorney's it's... perspective. Is there any consequence for someone such as Ron Estes putting out $100,000 in attack ads that are blatant lies? Is there any accountability for that? The candidate has a lot of leeway on what they can do. Um, let me answer it for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, it wasn't Estes that put those out. No, it was the it was, it was the Republican committee, although Estes has put some yes. out. Yes, well, he says, and, he and man, I approve this message. And if he was a man, he'd stand up and say it was a lie. Correct, so. but he's not. I have a question. Do you support parental equality laws where unless a parent is criminally adjusted, unfit, through a criminal court that both parents are determined to be fit and have a right to equal time? I believe that equal parenting time should be the standard and that we should have, it's always going to be best interest of the child, but we should start from an equal parenting time and go from there. What is, what is your standing on dad's rights? Like, um, because I know Kansas has a lot of mother's rights and nothing against moms no, or anybody here, but um, fathers are just as well heard in a court case than mothers, so how do you stand upon that? It, it, it's a, yeah, it's the same way. It's, it's, it's the same thing that, you know, it's best interest of the child first, equal parenting time for both, and that the father should have the exact same rights as mothers. Why'd you ask him that? He's a federal guy. 
Well, see, people like I'm also an attorney. How about this dump tread on me, federal government? If somebody wants to raise a law like that, say, no, 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 the federal government has no place in families. I think the federal government does have a place in protecting families against state overreach. Yes, I agree with that. I do have one other question my wife just actually asked me. Uh, right now, the criminal penalty for a social worker lying is only a misdemeanor. Would you support legislation that would increase the penalties for lying, committing perjury for the removal of children? Yes, in general I would. The, the thing that I, I can see some potential for abuse there on both sides of that. Sure. Um, I would say that you should have two levels of uh, a misdemeanor and a felony because you can have somebody that filled something incorrectly and get in somebody accused them of, well, you lied. Well, I, no, you didn't. And then, but you can have other things where somebody just blatantly falsifies documents, and then that should be a felony in my point, particularly if your kids are being lost. Our children are our most precious resource. We need to protect them. Yes, sir. Thank you very okay, much, guys. Mr. Thompson. So I think it's pretty clear. I think that rather than march, I think that we should all absolutely take the moment, take a few minutes, and if we can go down the road, we can get our votes cast because what we don't want to... What we don't want to have happen is something happens and we don't make it. I have literally watched, for example, Kirby. Do you guys remember the last election? She was running for a judge position in the family law sink case. She lost by 90 votes. Walters, the white collar criminal that's currently still there removing your children, won by 90 votes. We cannot let that happen. So I, hear so I think, rather than marching, which you know I like to do because I'm a yeller, but I think it's more important, I think Mike's right, I think right now what we should do is we should carpool our butts right down there to that church, and I think we should go make sure our voice is heard, and that we get somebody who will actually represent us in the federal setting, and understand that a lot of these questions were state level questions, and Jim would never be presented with those. But it, he, he will would absolutely be over the federal Title 4 d 4 e funding, which they are using as profit to take your kids. That will be where you can make a difference. The other way we can make a difference here, too, is we get me in and I help the down-ballot elections. So as a representative, I come back and I'm helping to campaign for oh, the... you mean like Cruz is coming in for, you know... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Hey, line them up, I'll knock them all down too, yeah. so I'm all right with that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Raymond, but how many want to go vote with me right now? Then let's roll. And hey, no signs can be yeah, within no signs. 350 feet. No signs, but if you voted already, or you're like from Colorado, so I can't vote here, uh, we'll, we're going to stay here. If everybody shows back up, we'll march anyways. So whoever wants to stay here and continue the protest, we will. Everyone that's eligible to vote and wants to vote, let's get this man into office. We need representatives that are going to fight this corruption. Now let me ask you again, what is it you want? Justice! That is so weak that I think my seven, I think my ten grandchildren could do better than that. I want to hear your voice. You ready? Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention? Yeah. What do you want? Justice! And when do you want it? Now! Yeah. What do you want? Justice! Yeah. And when do you want it? Now! Yeah. And let's go get it. Go vote! Go vote! Everybody know where to go? Sharon Baptist Church, the address is. He's looking in his pocket. You guys only have a short amount of time. Don't get pulled over. If you get pulled over, say you're going to vote for James Thompson and to give you a police escort because he's fighting criminal child traffickers. Hey, everybody, you need to go to Sharon Baptist Church at 2221 South Oliver. No matter where you're registered to vote, it's an early vote center. Go vote right now. Oh. The Arkansas couple, don't you do it. I am.
That's the Hi, dream baby. team right there. She That's me. Woohoo! Okay, no, go ahead. Give a narration. What am I doing? We have a couple here. Do you from mind Arkansas. if I put you on camera? Okay. Their children, uh, their child was taken. It fell out of the bed uh, while sleeping with your mother. And um, when they noticed the child had a swollen arm, uh, child was t they took the child to the emergency room, then they took the child to Children's Mercy, ran a bunch of tests to see if there was anything else wrong with the child. They ended up having to do a lie detector test, which they passed, to make sure that they weren't physically abusing the child. Um, and then they tested positive for marijuana, so they were met with DCF at the hospital. And their other children are with the mother. All the way from Arkansas. We're out in Arkansas. Uh, Conway. Yeah, let me zoom this out a little bit. Hey, hey, so, hold on a minute. Oh, hold on a second. Say something on the mic, sir. Guys, I don't know how to tell it is on. Um, I brought a handful of cards. If you guys have stories, I need emails. Um, so I really just came down to say thank you. Um, we're trying to look into it. I'm trying to go through the proper channels and uh, get the oversight so duly needed. So. Thank you. Kansas has my children. You guys need a card? Come get a card. I'm a father that went on the hunger strike on the Kansas Capitol. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Thank you. Uh, I'm Chris Logan. I am uh, the deputy campaign manager for Chris Rockwell. Okay. And I will also be writing for the Party of Kansas. So I really hope that we can pass Do you mind if I. Do you mind if I live stream you for a minute? You explain exactly what it is you're putting together because I wasn't aware of what Jennifer's talking about. You just share with people about what you're trying to do right now. And if you're not comfortable right now, that's fine. The only, the only reason I hesitate is because I'm trying to go through the channels. I got to get the speaker. Thank you. I, I got to do this. I got to do that. But what I want you guys to do is to give me as much information that I need so that when we go back in session three weeks from now, I can say, hey, look, my email box is flooded with these emails. These people, they've lost their kids, they've done this. Okay. Would you, you know, just tell people exactly what it is you want in your email and I'll, I'll publish your email address from Kansas. I'm looking for reasons that we need to have the oversight committee for uh, our foster kids, um, our kids in foster care for the state of Kansas. I've seen it in testimony and I just want to get as many stories as I can. Um, so that we, we realize just how relevant it is and how badly needed it is. Well, thank you for your work, sir. God bless you. Okay. Well, back to the family here. All right. Sorry about that, guys. We're just as important as the politician does in your story. No matter. Here, let's stand over here so the wind ain't hit me. So, are you guys currently living in Wichita? Okay, so you need people to stand up and stand with you. And, and right now, so you were just visiting in Arkansas. We moved down there. My mom actually works for DCF in, oh, in wow. Arkansas. She convinced us to move down to Arkansas, promised us that she would help us, you know, be, uh, get financially stable, get into a place. Um, we moved down there, and um, things turned for the worse, and she more or less kicked us out. Our van broke down on the way here. Um, and she was following us. She just dropped us off and basically more or less just said, hope you get him and our son back. So um, right now we're just trying to figure out exactly what to do. We've been calling the DCF worker. She has not responded back to any of our um, calls or any voicemails. And we're supposed to be having to coordinate, they said, which is the, the first hearing or whatever, to determine the placement of the child. And you know, did you guys get the information on the uh, senator, the Arkansas representative that... I had seen some of it. Um, I had seen it on the link, and I looked over it a little bit. Um, but I do know that um, as far as that goes, I don't, we don't know 
what our next step is at this point, you know. Well, you're with good people. If people want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Over social media, um, my name is Justin Lewis, and hers is Corey Ann Foster. And then also, she has a telephone number. Do you want to give it's it? It's 316 803 Fighting with you. They've had our children for two years. I hope they don't have yours for that long, but uh, we're going to win this together, guys. All right, everybody. So that, uh, sorry about the wind. I hope you guys got a good broadcast. Um, uh, I got to get behind a sign or something. So as you can see, we are making waves. Not only are we making waves, we got representatives out here wanting to get oversight. Yeah. Oh, come on over here, Daria. We're going to say hi to Daria. I'm going to walk around, and uh, what I'll do is we'll just talk to some parents, see where they're from while they're here. But understand, we are winning, and this information is getting out there. We need to stand up for our rights and for our children. So this is Daria. What do you want to say to everybody? Um, well, I just want to say I've been gagged, so I can't say too much. But um, we're still going to stay strong and stay fighting, and don't ever give up hope and keep fighting strong. So. All right, and I got I just met her just now. I've been helping fight with her. My wife's been with her, but I praise God she got a hold of us, and uh, we're going to stand with her. What DCF should be doing is trying to help her uh, be stable and get her kids home. Instead, they're trying to exploit her, but thanks thanks for coming out here, dog. Yeah. That's what it takes. Anything. All right, I'm going to walk around and see. Hey, I know this is inappropriate, but you're a very attractive woman, and I want your phone number. <laughs> Sorry, it's my wife. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Hey, can I film you? No? Okay. No, it's okay. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I'm just trying to see if anyone else has anything to say before I shut down. There's some of Jamie's kids. Hey, guys. You never met me. My name's Raymond. You look just like your mom. And I've been fighting with for you guys since I met your mom. How you doing? There's one of the babies. Hey, he's a Coloradan. <laughs> yeah, look at that smile. Look at it. That's why we fight. Smiles like that. All right. Let's see here. Anybody else? Hey, who's this person? Hey. Hi. <laughs> She's hiding. She's like, don't film me. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. So I think we're shutting it down. Guys, we need to keep doing this, getting out, making our voice heard, being loud. We're going to free our children, keep in touch with all the events. God bless you, and uh, say goodbye to everyone, Jamie. Here from the beginning. All right, God bless you all.